Washington's got a new athletic director and it's Oregon week. Lots to talk about. You are locked on Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Monday, Husky fans, it is game week. The Huskies play football again this week. Welcome to Lockdown Huskies. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. We write with Inside the Huskies with Fan Nation and Sports Illustrated. You can check out all our written work over at si.com slash college slash Washington. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day. And Lars, just let's just jump right in as, as we should, because there's a lot to talk about today. First, first thing on the docket is Washington has found a new athletic director, uh, Tulane AD Troy Dannon, who will be having his press conference on Tuesday. So let's just initial thoughts since we didn't do a bonus pod uh, as soon as it happens. Yeah. I mean, I think Anne-Marie Casse, Anne-Marie Casse could not have done better with this hire. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, hindsight being 2020, I'm sure you can maybe shoot for even higher, but I think for what Washington sure. wants and what Washington, this is a 10, let's just say it's a 10 year hire, five to 10 year hire. This is exactly the kind of guy who knows how to build up an athletic program and athletic programs that have been not, the caliber of Washington, right? We're talking UNI, right. University of Northern Iowa. We're talking Tulane University. Not necessarily marquee programs, but programs that when you actually take a step back and look at it, especially with UNI basketball, I mean, they're, they've been competitive. Oh, yeah. you, Tulane has gotten incredibly better at football and basketball. So this is not just a football hire. I think that's that's important to hit on. I think when you look at what you want at an athletic director for Washington when you're moving to the Big Ten, it's for every single sport to succeed. And that's exactly what Troy Dannon does. That's exactly what he's kind of made to do is help the entire athletic department build on football, no doubt. But also I think this is a good hire for Mike Hopkins where you get a Midwestern guy, a guy who kind of knows the planes, knows all, all parts of the country, even though he hasn't necessarily worked across the country. He's worked in the Midwest, mostly in Southeast. But I like you have to look at the resume and you have to like the body of work that you see. And for Washington, I don't think they could have done better. No, I, I totally agree. There's a, there's a whole lot to like about this hire. And you, you hit the nail right on the head there because when you think about just an, a good athletic department, it's built on football and men's basketball. And that's not a slight at literally any other sport. Those sports are the revenue sports throughout just the world of college athletics. They create 95% of schools revenue in most places. And if you want to thrive, you need to be good at those two sports. And what's Washington been good at for the last year and a half? Football. What do they need to get way better at? Basketball. And you're you're right. That Troy Dana does look like a really good basketball hire, which is one of just kind of the underrated aspects of this. Because yes, everyone is focused on this top 10 Husky football team, which rightfully so. There's a whole lot going right on the field for the Huskies right now, as we'll get into it since, like I said in the, in, in the opener, it is Oregon week. So obviously we're going to talk a lot about that, but it's, it's just really exciting to think about what this kind of means and what I'm really interested to see what happens off the field. Just over his first couple of months here, we're going to get a chance to talk to him uh, as you're listening to this on Monday. Tomorrow is when his initial press conference will be on Lars. I know both you and I will be there. So there, there will probably be more to talk about with in that regard on the Wednesday show, most likely. But I'm just I'm really curious just to kind of see what his thought process is, because one thing that I, I really want to think about right off the bat is offensive coordinator, because we both know that there is a really strong possibility that this is Ryan Grubbs last season as offensive coordinator for the Huskies, since he's probably going to get a head coaching job somewhere else. Like it's, we just have to call a spade a spade there. So the question is, what is Troy Dannon going to do about that with Kalen DeBoer? Is he going to say, all right, we need to keep Jamarcus Shepard around. Let's give him big dollars. Or, oh, maybe Nick Sheridan is the guy that you trust. What are we going to do to keep him around? But then also make sure Jamarcus Shepard stays in the fold. Or are you going to say, let's, okay, let's go out and make a big time hire of candidate X, candidate Y, whoever it may be that becomes available by just throwing money at them and saying, we know, and because Kalen DeBoer, as we know, had a whole lot of input in who got the job. So we know that, um, that, that that's another just big stamp of approval. So I think that that's going to be the first thing that we're really going to want to focus on when it comes to what's next for the just the athletic department as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I think this is certainly not going to be like a penny pinching hire. This is going to be a guy that says, "Hey, you know what? Maybe let's let's let these guys walk." Sort of thing. I think he understands the value that people bring. I think that's above all else. What Troy kind of when you look and read stories about him and you just dive more into him, he values people. And not not to say that Jen Cohen didn't or things like that, but it's like he is very engaged. He is very and 
we talked about it when Jen Cohen left, where it's not that she wasn't engaged, right? But it's the way that message is carried out, right? It's the right. public perception. It's the it's the just perception in general. It's and a Caleb DeBoer hands-on approach where we kind of see how he is with everybody that he interacts with. Exactly. And and that's something that I think we'll probably get to see more try as we get to meet him and things like that. But it just seems like that's the kind of guy he is very active on social media, which again, isn't the end all be all right. I mean, you could have an AD that puts out a hundred tweets a week and it's absolutely terrible. So I'm not <laughs> saying that that's the prerequisite for a good AD hire, but yeah. having said that, you know, I think that is something, especially when you talk about UW and marketing, we're going to talk about it later. You got game day coming in. Yep. Game day and Troy Dan on the same week and the same week. It, it, it's, you know, that's kind of the marketing that you want to have. And when you have good athletic programs like Washington has, and again, it's not just football and basketball. Women's basketball is on the uptick. UW softball is always going to be there. Soccer. Is Men's always soccer has been really good. good. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And so there's, there's so many even baseball, you know, base, baseball is baseball's decent. They, yeah. they, they they, exactly. I mean, you get an Adrian Beltre's son. For God's sakes, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's Andrew Beltre, man. So, so just had to get that shout out there. Shout out Jason Kelsey. Um, but, um, with that, with that being said, you know, I mean, that that's exactly what you want. You want this guy that's involved in everything, not just, I mean, you want him involved in football and basketball, absolutely, as we've talked about, but he's involved in every aspect. I mean, I don't know if this is, I don't, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I know apparently the wave was started in the city of Seattle, like, you know, the, the way the, the, the crowd wave was yeah, started like that. by Rob Weller at UW. Yep. Right, exactly. So, my dad was brought part, up being at that game. The the ironic part about Tulane being the you know coming from the wave or the, the green wave right. or whatever, and 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 he, and he left that in his bio. So I'm curious, does he know that already? That that has some history of Washington because I think there's a big marketing opportunity here, and I think not to knock Jen Cohen because I think she was great at fundraising. She was great at giving people opportunities, but I think Troy is the kind of guy where he's already got that and he knows how to market this. So he doesn't have to bring in 10, 20 other people. He can, but I think it's an out of, he already knows the vision and he just gets to execute his vision at a power five program. So you're saying the first time that he tweets hashtag Washington wave, that it's because you're predicting this right now on lockdown Huskies. Is, is, is that what you're telling me right now? I mean, I'm not saying that I will neither confirm nor deny that, but I'm just saying I will take the credit when that does happen. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's I, I wanted to make sure that you got the credit. So you're, you, you're welcome. We're just, just put that in the ether. You can clip it and put it out on social media, do all those things. Uh, no, you're, you're right. I, I, I'm, I think that that's really exciting. And then just kind of, because we do need to talk about basketball. We've seen some people in the comments saying no basketball until Mike Hopkins is gone or the team starts winning. That's not how this works. We, we this is our job to talk about the, about this basketball program and there's a lot to be excited about and this this team is really talented please you you, you have a take well, i was just gonna say i was not, not to be a spoiler but inside the huskies will be having a series of previews coming about the i since i was able to talk to every single new player coming in with the excited from christian kurt or christian king as a freshman we'll talk to all of them so those stories will be rolling out inside the Huskies. so whether you like it or not get to learn about this basketball team because i think it's actually <laughs> going to be one to watch this season there and there, there's starting to be some some hype around this team. This is a a veteran team. There's there's a whole lot going on there. And if they are solid, I, I think that this is the kind of hire that can say, all right, well, what do you need from me? How can we invest more in your program? Because we know what Husky basketball can be at its peak. We saw what it was with Isaiah Thomas. We've seen it uh, with Brandon Roy back in the day. We've seen this Husky basketball program at its height. How is it going to get back? Because if it does feel like Kalen DeBoer is around for the long term with the contract extension that he signed and with just the way that he seems to feel about this program, I don't think that Husky fans should be concerned with losing him anytime soon. So combining that with a not just good but profitable bas basketball program, this plus the, this move to the Big Ten, this is all just this kind of the stars aligning for UW in my opinion, where there are a whole lot of positives on the horizon and this just kind of feels like the hire of, all right, I can see where all of this is going. How can I take it to the next level is how I kind of see what, what his mentality might be. So you're saying Troy Jan is going to catch the wave right at the right time. Oh, I, I you know, no, I saw, I, I, I saw it. I, know it was, oh. I, I saw it coming. So, you know, in, in, instead of making a comment about that, uh, before we move on here and talk about college game day, which as we know is going to be very exciting, we're going to take a break and talk about our friends over at Athletic Brewing because it's now time for your game changer of the week brought to you by Athletic Brewing. And, you know, even though they didn't play this week, much like Michael Penix, who might have regained the Heisman lead with what happened in Arizona last night, even though Caleb Williams did play. 
or excuse me, at USC last night, even though Caleb Williams did play a fantastic game. Uh, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. They're constantly releasing a limited edition experimental styles to add their variety. And one of the best things about them is no hangovers ever. You can find Athletic in-store, online, and at bars around the country. They are the fastest non growing non-alcoholic brewing company in the United States. So get on board. Uh, you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. And first-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkoff. Uh, check out for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. got some big news coming up now don't we there's game game day's coming and i know you and i are both going to be there uh i i i i i'm really not excited about waking up that early to get to game day but this is going to be just such a fantastic day around just just UW's campus in general that I'm really excited to just kind of be a part of it and get to cover it and just kind of see everything that could happen especially if the Huskies can find a way to pull out a win over the Oregon Ducks. So I just, what are your initial thoughts on game day coming to Seattle? And cause I have something that I want to get out there, but I want to really want to know what you have to say first. Yeah, no, I think it's kind of ironic that the first time game day came was 10 years ago, almost to the day came October 12th, yep. 2013 against Oregon. And that was Steve Sarkis in the final year of Washington. Kind of the, the year that crescendoed everything that, you know, everyone thought, hey, maybe this is the game that they would turn the corner. I think this is a we, – we talked about it before the show. This is a different team with a different mentality, with a different head coach. Everything is different. They're 0-2 on game day. Record speaks for itself. But I think Kalen DeBoer, this is kind of his time to be like, hey, you know what, this is your opportunity to introduce yourself to the national stage. Not that he's not already there, but this is, this is a different level. And to say, hey, if you can beat Oregon back-to-back, at Alton and then in your own home with college game day. I mean, you look at the rest of the schedule. I mean, yes, you got the USC game. Yes, you got a couple of the trap games in there. But this really kind of not defines the season, but this certainly is one of the defining points of the season. And I think with everything that this is going to mean for Washington, and it will mean for Oregon, right? Not, not sure. equally much for Oregon. But I think this team is just on a different level and on a different path than the Oregon is. And it's it's – I mean, I can see Oregon being 10 and 2 this year. I can see him being 9 and 3, oh, 10 and 2. Yeah. So, so, by far, still a good team. team. But this this Washington team is built to win a national championship. It, it's, it, it, there's no other way around it. And so, this hey, is Lars, kind of the. I, I just want you to be very careful with what you say because there are a lot of Oregon fans in our comments where we say things like this and they say, oh, you guys are really underestimating Oregon. Are, are we? I don't, I don't think we are. That's, that's a really good team. We've said that yeah. time and time again. This is, I think this is just the biggest yeah. test. Right, exactly. I think that that's exactly the point where you're able to avoid the game at Arizona, where you still come out with a win. You beat Cal handily. You've done all the things. You're you beat Michigan State in East Lansing handily. So I think you you you've done everything that you're supposed to do. This is just the next week, and really, I mean, it's so cliche where Canada West says we want to go one and zero each week, but really, I mean, it's kind of the proof is in the pudding. Where it's like, okay. Oregon's up this week. You know, nobody's really talked about Oregon. I mean, we have, we have, and people have. Absolutely. You know, you, you, the, this team hasn't given off the sense of, oh, we looked ahead to Oregon, so that's why we got caught a little bit against Arizona. No, Arizona just played a good game. They just had a good, they're, they had a good team. Also, they had pretty good ball ball control in that game in terms of when you have a seven, almost seven minute drive on offense, it takes away half of a quarter. Which right. for Washington, that's three scoring drives right there. That's twenty one <laughs> points. That's that's a significant amount. So, I mean, with the way that Oregon and Washington contrast and kind of overlap i think it'll be very similar to last year where you're probably going to have a one score game i mean the line is three on FanDuel, so pretty fair to say it's going to be a close game and i think this is this will be the game that defines kaylin and Bohr at at this point in his tenure without question no, I, I 100% agree. And that, so just kind of talking about like Kalen DeBoer introducing himself to the national stage and just kind of everything that has changed about this program leveling up and doing all those different things under Kalen DeBoer. I know it's something we've like kind of touched on very briefly on the show before, but the comment I had was about the, um, the video that UW football released on social media after the announcement. Uh, it was featuring like Braylon Trice and Jalen Polk. There are a couple of guys, other guys in there that I can't remember. Uh, where the, the, the theme of the video was we ain't surprised was where there's like, yeah, this is, this is what we work for. This is everything. 
I like I I've watched Husky football my entire life. I never thought that I would see just like that level of confidence and swagger from a Husky football team. And that just kind of shows everything that has changed around this team, in my opinion, where this is, yes, this is what we were working for. And it's something we've talked about before on the show where Michael Penix, Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, Braylon Trice, Zion Tupola Fatui, everybody who came back, this is why they came back. And they're living up to the hype so far. They are exceeding it. Now this Oregon week, is going to be a different test. We know this because this is a top 10 matchup. We know that this is a whole different level of opponent than they've seen so far. And they played a good team in Arizona. We can, you know, say what you will about the rest of the schedule. It's not great, but I will say it's better than Oregon's. That's that's true. Just look at the strength of the schedule. So yeah, this is a different test. But just what this coaching staff has done with these players, because you know, if you if you play football, you'd be a very confident person. Like that's that's just kind of how it goes. But this coaching staff has done its best to breed it and instill it and just take it to a whole new level and just say, that's how you need to play. And they've done that. And I I just think that this is just a whole new era that we're heading into of Husky football. And, and not only that, I mean, the ironic part is it's rooted in substance. I know somebody yes. said that a couple of weeks ago, but this is actually rooted. I mean, when you watch that video – it's not forced, right? The players aren't reading off a cue card, but also they're not like, oh, hey, yeah, we're the best, we're this, we're that. You know, it's Jalen Polk and Braylon Trice setting the tone. They're both right. tone setters. They're, they're, it's not Michael Penix saying, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Or, you know, hey, look at this watch. You know, hey, look at my wrist, look at my nails. Like, it, 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 it's none of that. It's no flash. I mean, it's flash. Believe me, the offense is flash, but it's rooted in substance. You know, sorry yeah. to break Dan Lenny's heart there. Right, because it was Dan Lanning that said that. Right, it wasn't. That wasn't. I, I believe Dion, you're right. right. I, I, I think you're right. It's... Yeah, yeah, because because that, that that that's what it came from. Until you know, they're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. It's like okay, you wouldn't the have ironic... the cameras in the locker room if uh if you were really not fighting for clicks. Right, exactly. Now I, I appreciate the sentiment that Dan Lanning was trying to lay there. Sure, absolutely. But you'll, you you will never see that from Caleb. I I don't think I don't think and shout out to Hadley Heck and and everybody that runs Unit Social. I don't think that will ever be a thing. They might say, "Hey, you know what? We we knew we were gonna do. We, we, yeah, th- th- that might be the most you will get. Where it's the post game yeah. locker room in the thing, celebrating like this is what we fought for. This is what, and then break it down and let the players handle it. That, and yeah. then you know let the music start blaring and everything like that. That's why Kalen is truly rooted in substance and why all the players came back for him. Yep, because you have to remember in 2021 when Oregon beat Washington, when arguably. A, Jimmy Lake had his most criminal job, and I'm not talking about the play on the sideline. I'm talking about the decision to punt from your own 10-yard line, ten yard line down seven oh. with like a couple of minutes left in the game where you're basically just saying, yeah, you know what? We don't have an offense. My punter is going to get the job done for you. Like, And shout then we also remember – And then, you know, shout out Jan Green for hiking that thing through the end zone and sending a message. That, that, that's, what, that's what that play <laughs> really did. But but at the end of the day, I mean, we look back at all their previous matchups, and you really look back at last year, right? It's It's – that game was it was a four quarter game. Every it was fought back and forth. Both, I mean, you know, Oregon's going to score points. I mean, Jamar Muhammad's going to lock down a couple of guys, but you know, this is a big game for Thaddeus and Elijah. This is a big yep. game for Cam Pab. This is a big game for Eddie. This is a big game for Braylon. It's a big game for everyone. But I mean, all these guys came back and came. Jamar Muhammad came to Washington for this. He ain't getting this at Oklahoma State. Nope. You know, who else we got? I mean. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Zach Sterling coming off. I was gonna say, no, I was gonna say, maybe, yeah, Vince, Vince Sunday, but also maybe, maybe Zach Durfee is able to be freed this weekend. You know, who, who knows? Yeah, so well, like we that. should get a decision on that this week. So, you know, and, and if Charlie Baker decides to do the right thing, I think we know where that route's gonna head. But before that happens, regardless, can't, can't get all, ahead of yourself there. Right, right. You know, the game's got to kick off first. But with that being said, you know, there's just so all the pieces are there. Everything's real. It it, it feel this feels different than any other. I mean, it felt a little similar to last year in Oregon, where it's like, wait, Washington actually should win this game. Washington could win this game. Now you right. need the 62 yard of the Taj to tie it, and, and a lot of things to fall. They were two touchdown underdogs last year. Exactly. So now you come in. Now you're you're giving three points at home. So maybe it's a pick and game. Push. But either it's a push. But either but, but, but either way, I mean, it, this team just feels so much different, even than last year's team, where you yes. have Dylan Johnson, you have so many other weapons to where Jalen McMillan should be healthy. I know he said he was. Caleb Moore said he was healthy the past two weeks. I think he actually plays against Oregon. You know, he didn't have yeah. to play against Cal. He didn't have to play against Oregon. When it matters, these guys step up. 
that's no, it's, it's, it's exactly that. I know we've, we've got like, we've kind of like stepped on the toes of, of segment three a little bit where we're going to just talk about for all our audio only listeners, the, just the things that we were going to watch during Oregon week be, but this all plays into it. And I know we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. We got to take a quick break here first, because we got to talk about our friends over at eBay motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, led headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right. So what's the number one thing that you're looking for during Oregon week? Because it could be on the field. It could be off the field. I feel like this is, I, it could be on Twitter because there's going to be a lot of that as well, which I, I just always personally just love like just sitting back and reading because it's hilarious. But what's, what's the number one thing that you want to watch this week? Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, I think in traditional Oregon week style, I'm not sure we're going to hear much from the players this week. We'll probably hear more from the coaching staff. And it's not that these players aren't trustworthy in front of a camera, but it's just like, look, there's no reason to give anybody an opening, and Oregon will probably do the same thing, right? I would not be surprised if Oregon doesn't have their players talk just because it's like, well, A, what are you going to say that's not saying any obvious and not going to get us in trouble, right? Like, you know, right. I think we saw it against the CU Oregon game where it's like, hey, look, it's just better off just let the coaches talk and we'll just let the game decide itself on 1230 on Saturday afternoon. But the one thing I am curious about is the health, right? Who really yes. on, on, bo- on, on both sides – on both sides of the ball, but we'll take the Washington angle here. We know probably Jay will be healthy. Julius probably good to go. Julius Baylor probably good to go. But all those other injuries that kind of racked up, who is able to step up? And especially in the secondary, how are you able to – who is going to spy Bo Nicks? That's the one, the one so thing I, I, I've got. So I have two names there. I, I think it'll be either uh, Edifonio Lopocio or it'll be Dominic Campton. And I think that – uh, a, a lot of that is gonna just going to be determined by the health of Asa Turner. Like, there's a chance he comes back. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised kind of either way if he does play. You know, there's always setbacks that might happen. So it's that's, that one's a little bit more up in the air. Same with Tui Latuli Gasanoa. But what, it's it's going to come down to that because if Asa is back, it kind of, especially with the way Vince Dunley has played, I wouldn't be surprised if, and this is uh, where we, we might see a little bit more like, just dime package with six DBs on the field because Mish Powell was great in run support, but just to kind of keep Vince Nunley on the field with everything he's done over the past couple of weeks. And then just also be able to just say, yeah, instead of um, putting an extra linebacker out there, no slight to Alfonso to Patala, really go forth. Um, Carson Bruno might be Dom Hampton can play like a linebacker if they need him to. So just bring him down to the box. He's kind of faster than basically all of those guys. So I, I think that that's, that's something to, to consider when it comes to just the health of Ace Turner. Yeah, well, I mean, I think honestly, the, the big and the, no, the, no disrespect to Asa, but I think the biggest one is Tuli because that that's yeah, where that it's. But when you have Bucky Irving and you have the ability to run with Bo Nix, Jordan James fr- is really good too. Right, that that front line really matters more. I mean, yes, I mean, yes, secondary matters. Yes, linebackers. Yes, everybody matters. But that offensive line, defensive line, that's where you win it in the trenches. That's where Washington did great last year in the trenches. We were able to slow down enough, do just do enough. When I mean, you get the sack on Bo Nix late in the fourth quarter, that sort of thing. You need I, without Thule, I mean Javon Parker has to step up. Uh, Tui Tui Taylor has to step up, and all these guys, which Jake they can, Bandis, yeah, right, right, Jacob Band. But but w- w- when you take out Thule, that's a big tone setter that you're losing yes. there. I, I mean, we're not saying he's out. We're not saying he's out. But just if you take him out of the picture, that room does look a little bit different because you started the season with Thule and not uh, Tui. So now right. you're flipping that in the middle of the season for the biggest game of the season, and you're probably having. Javon Parker, Jacob Bandis next to him, or MJ Ale, I should say. You know, the, those those guys are all going to be in the rotation. They're good, they're serviceable, but having that big body not clogging up the lanes, I think that that might be the biggest concern for me heading into this week. Now, if he's healthy, great. There's your you're alleviated, and you can worry about Dom and everything else. But Even if, if he can only play like 10, 15, 20 snaps, like that's that's still a huge boost. 
Right. I think I think that's more gonna be like third down packages, sort of things. Like, hey, I like, disagree. Just kind of I think it'd be the other way around. Where first down, it's first second down, where it's just more obvious run scenarios. What kind of and, and again, this is assuming he can play. Where they give him 15, 20 snaps, right? Just have it be on some of those more obvious running scenarios. Where then in passing downs, you can bring in uh, a Fatui Tuitele, who's a little bit just like more athletic, and you know you can say what you will about his injury history, or Javon Parker, who's just kind of shown more of a prowess when it comes to rushing the passer. The, see, I was going to say I was more or less thinking that Parker would be the, the the pass rusher in that in that scenario. But yeah, yeah. but I, I, it also kind of depends on what Oregon's game plan wants to be. Do they want to try and force Bo into throwing it more, or do you want to try and set the tone with the run? I think they'll probably set the tone with the run. Yep. But knowing that Oregon offense, I mean, will shine first year as Oregon's offensive coordinator. I just have a hunch they might want to send an aerial message, knowing yes, you have Jabbar Muhammad, but then I remember I think it was Trayshawn Holden. Oregon's transfer receiver. Yep. Quote, quote tweeted. I still have the screenshot. Quote tweeted Thaddeus Dixon's commitment and said, "Like love it." And I don't think it was supporting a JUCO transfer. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that was the love it that he meant. And, th- and this was back when he committed. So this wasn't right. this wasn't this week. This what this was this was long ago. So I think there, there's kind of a message to be sent where hey, you guys are DBU or you guys are DB all this and that. Watch this. Yep. And, and so that's gonna be I, a real test. So I, I also wanted to talk about health, but I wanted to talk about on some somebody on the other side of the field because I think that Kyrie Jackson is going to be one of the if, if he plays, that's going to be a matchup to watch. And if he can't play, that's also going to be a matchup to watch for very different reasons. Yeah. I think that yeah. Kyrie Jackson has played really well this year. We uh, and I, I have to reference this again. We had a lot of Oregon fans in the comments saying you haven't watched Oregon. Y- yes, we have. It's our job. Uh like that, that that's what we do. But we saw a team with 101st rank strength of schedule who has admittedly played very well at times, but also has not necessarily played a super quality opponent. So that's like, yeah, Kyrie Jackson has played really well and you got to give him his flowers because he looked really good, especially against Colorado, which is probably their toughest test. Like let's, let's be real here. Um, or Texas tech, like Texas tech's fine. I, I almost, almost forgot about that, but with, with their record, you know, it's, eh, we'll, we'll see. But, um, I, I think that he is going to be the map, like just the player that I really am going to just want to key in on uh, just, especially if he is able to go because we kind of, the, the other big injury that they have, or at least that I, I can think of at, at, at this moment is Noah Whittington, who is done for the year, according to Dan Lanning, which is a bummer. Uh, but Jordan James behind him is also really good. So they, they just, they just churn out running things there, man. So that's, that's going to be something to watch and just kind of to touch on something you said earlier, like, yeah, they're probably going to want to establish the run because who is the guy, like, even even more than Noah Whittington, who just really set the tempo last year? It's Bucky Irving. Bucky Irving just could not get tackled last year. Like, the dude was just wearing grease and just running through the whole defense. I think he broke about 374 tackles, something like that. Just that, that that's what it felt like by the end of that game. So that's that's kind of what I want to watch is Kyrie Jackson and then can Washington just tackle in the run game? Because if they can, this is going to be a very different game from last year, in my opinion. I mean, not only just tackle in the run game, but just tackle in general. I mean, we look at the yep. Arizona game when you missed a couple of easy sacks. And if, you, if you're right. able to, if, you, if your arms are wrapped around Bo Nix and he doesn't get brought down, get him on the ground. Paying, you are paying for that in every way, shape, or form. So right. I think you know, this is one of those games where you don't want to over prepare, right? You don't want to think too hard. I mean, especially, you know, watching coaches say all the time, just play fast and free, fast and free. But at the same point, if you play fast and you, those arms become free, now we got a problem. So I think it's a matter of can these guys be not disciplined enough, but can they make the play when it matters, right? Can yep. they, can you make that key third down? Because again, we go back, I've said it, you know, when you go back to playing Washington State under Mike Leach, they're going to get their yards. Sure. This isn't going to be a 45 10 game. This is going to be a 38 35. 37, 34, like last year, just something in that same ballpark. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. So I think it's a matter of, can you make that big conversion? Can you, not the Taj Davis play per se, because that's hard to replicate, but can you make those plays, bro? But can you make those plays when they matter? Can you get the stop when they matter? Can you capitalize on Oregon's mistakes, like running on fourth and one with the keeper with Ty Thompson? You know, that various things. I don't think we're going to have that again this year. So everything that worked to Washington's benefit is probably not necessarily going to be in play this year. So what can they do to overcome those things that are not that are going to be in play this year that weren't in play last year? So it's 
and I, this is as, as we start to wrap up here, this is probably my final thought. It's exactly that where last year, and this is, and I, I feel like it's exactly what we've been saying about the defense all season long. Are they the best? No. Are they the worst? No. But they step up and make a play when they need to. And that's, that's really all that, that you can ask for at certain times. And that's something that the offense has done time and time and time again, where I don't necessarily know if I'm worried about them because you kind of look at every single time that they needed to make a key play in last year, especially in this game, in this Oregon game, the not, not just the throw to Tosh Davis, the bomb to Jalen Polk when he got hit late by Justin Flo, Michael Penix, that, that, that like that was just as good of a throw in my opinion. That was just a fantastic, just pressure in your face. No, I'm just going to heave it 50, 50 yards down the field. Like that's, that's what this offense can do. And if Oregon is going to come out and like when we had Ben Glassmeyer on the show last week, plug, make sure you watch that episode too. That was great. Uh, and they're going to play seven defensive backs and they're going to say, we're not going to get beat deep. I think Dylan Johnson can have a great day. So it's just a matter of, can these plays be made when needed on both sides of the ball? On offense, we've, we seem to know the answer, but on defense, can you stop this Oregon offense? Because they're racking up a lot of yards too. It's, and and I, that's that's really just my biggest thing that I really want to watch and my biggest question. Yeah, and my final point would be when you go back and look at the Stanford game against Oregon, Stanford had a potential to go up 14 nothing early in that game and didn't. Washington has the better offense to do it. So if you can put Oregon in a hole early on and have them to fight back, I think the defense, to your point, can do enough to where it's like, hey, we'll keep that seven-point margin, that 10-point cushion. As long as the offense can keep doing its thing and we don't get torched on a one-play 75-yarder, you right. know, that's kind of the recipe for success there. Right. And do, I don't, I don't know if there's ever going to really be like a, like a two touchdown lead for one team, not like Arizona head over USC. Um, it's, I don't, I don't know if it's ever going to get to that point, but you're right. If that's possible, you have to just put these teams in the ground when you can, you can't let them hang around like Arizona did with USC. They didn't just step on their throat. That's and that just to, to use the analogy, but that's just kind of what needs to happen. Lars, as always, thank you so much for being here. I know our, the everydayers out there who we really appreciate always just love your insight. Uh, and we just hope you're loving this podcast, truly. As we move into Oregon week, we really want to make sure that you guys are here with us through everything because there's going to be so much to talk about this week, next week, and as we move forward the rest of the season. So to do that, best way, make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We are everywhere. Make sure you just give us a five-star rating where you can. Like the podcast. Leave a comment. We're probably going to try to do some kind of mailbag at some point this week. If possible, we're going to have some special guests on too. So just stick around for that. A lot coming.